I'm surprised how well it runs, even though it took forever to get to turn on. Twenty four hours from now, we want to be driving this car that's behind me. As you can see, it's pretty bad. And it's not just any E46, it's actually a ZHP. And for like most rebuilds that you've probably seen on YouTube, people buy cars from the auction all the time wrecked like this, but we have a special for you guys today. The person that wrecked this car is with us and he's gonna be helping us fix it. So this is a 2005 330i ZHP, six speed manual, it is the last model E46 BMW you can get before you buy the E46 M3. And just like the E46 M3 market prices, the ZHP prices have went up like crazy as well. It used to have a carbon fiber hood, and the funny thing is, he literally put this on a couple of months ago. So I think this is probably one of the worst E46s that we've rebuilt. Oof. It looks pretty bad if you ask me. We've got oil filter housing completely crushed, and if you look at it, the engine's actually sitting a little bit further back and tilted back. I've never seen this much damage from a front end wrecked E46. So it looks like both of the engine mount arms are completely broken off. The oil filter housing, the power steering reservoir is no longer existent. All this front end stuff is all gone. We've got some damage on that front apron as well. Hopefully the strut tower is good. Also seems like the valve cover itself is cracked. So we're gonna be replacing a lot of stuff on here. With the way it's looking, if those engine mount arms are cracked, the transmission cross member is probably also cracked. And that's probably why the shifter doesn't even move. You can't put in any gear, you can't do anything. Which is why we're outside. Pushing this into the shop is gonna be a nightmare. So what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna jack it up like good old days, put this thing on jack stands and get right to work. And here's the shifter I was talking about. It is sunken in. You can't really, you can move it around, but it doesn't do anything. So hopefully right now we're in neutral. We're gonna go ahead and lift it up. Let's get right to it. So it's 1257. We're just gonna start the clock at one o'clock. So we got 24 hours, one o'clock tomorrow. We wanna be on the road. Let's get to work. <laughs> what happened? Maybe I should have jacked the car up before I started this video. So, first roadblock. I think the 24 hour timeline is already out the window. There is a window inside of the transmission. Not good, let me show you. You know, most people run into these kind of issues where it screws the timeline halfway through the video. We haven't even started working yet. Oh my goodness. His name is German, by the way, if you guys didn't catch that. His name is not German. Then what is it? It's Herman. Herman? <laughs> huh? What? And here's the straw that broke the camel's back. All of this 24 hour timeline went to crap right after we found this hole in the transmission and all because of this exhaust bracket that hooks up to the transmission. Then we also have the cross member that's completely ripped out. We don't even know where the rest of it went. And then on top of that, the whole nut cert popped out of the chassis. It is so hard to believe that it's been over a year and a half since the last time we touched this car. It's just been sitting here getting eaten up by the weeds. But we finally thought this is the perfect time. Not really, obviously it's raining, but this is the only time that we had to really get it into the shop and figure out a plan on how we're gonna bring this ZHP back on the road. Now over the last year and a half, a lot of things have changed. We have a lot less time than we used to have. We're working on a lot of other things. So it really is only the weekends that we're gonna be able to work on this car, even for German to come over and help out. So we're really gonna to have to figure out what the actual game plan is gonna be and see where this ZHP takes us. Once you get up there. Keep going. Keep going. That was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. But I am soaked. 
and something is rubbing in the front really bad. We finally got the car into the shop and I'm already seeing a bunch of stuff. As you can see, German already took apart some of the front end when it first got wrecked. But as we were pushing it in and just looking around, there's already a few other things I'm noticing. So we're gonna put it up on the lift and then see what else we find. So we're under the car and my goodness, there are so many spider webs everywhere. There's freaking vines growing on this. Look at this. It has been sitting, so that's to be expected but there is a lot of damage. Luckily, we do have a parts car that we can use, but still, we gotta take it apart some, and I wanna walk you guys through some of the things I'm seeing right off the bat. So first things first, the engine and transmission, they both have broken components. Both engine mount arms are broken, they completely sheared off. The transmission cross member completely sheared off. The shifter bracket completely sheared off. Even where the actual transmission cross member bolts into the car, it actually stripped out those nut certs that are already in there from factory. It just pulled that whole thing out. So all that's broken. The whole transmission and engine is being held up by this reinforcement plate, by the exhaust and the drive shaft. That's really what's holding it in. If we took all this off, everything would just come slam into the ground. Now we do know that he hit a Jeep going around a blind corner. So there was a carbon fiber hood on here at that point, and it actually just all that impact got taken up by the engine, which is why it pushed everything back. It cracked that whole oil filter housing and all of that. And we also have a little bit of damage up front as well. So let's take a look underneath what else I see. This exhaust was already cobbled together at one point. So there is quite a bit of corrosion, but it's mostly surface rust. And for the most part, I mean the subframe, he has done some work on here before, the diff bushings and all of that. So the biggest concern that I have right off the bat that's the, going to be the hardest part to fix would be if there is any kind of damage to the, the shock tower itself as well as the transmission has a whole section, a whole chunk that's cracked off hanging on to this exhaust. Now here's the rest of the damage. Now you might be wondering, is this even worth it at this point? I mean honestly, he just needs a car to run around in. He's not gonna, we're not trying to make it a show car. We're not trying to get everything perfect. But the other thing is we have a whole other car that he was T-boned in that's exactly the same specs. It's got ZHP bumpers on it. It's just not a real ZHP. And it was T-boned on that side. So most of the stuff we have spares of. Now there are gonna be a few things that we have to buy. So that cross member, that special order, the actual shifter arm is gonna be special order. We might do some upgrades while we're at it. But the goal here is we need to see how deep the extent of all this damage is. The shock tower is really that messed up. Do we need to get it pulled? Do we just jerry-rig it with the come along in a tree? There's just a lot of challenges up ahead. It's gonna be a good learning experience for German and it'll be some pretty good content for you guys as well. So up in the front, as you can see, some of the stuff has already been removed. And when we removed it, we found a lot of other things wrong. For example, all of these wires have been cut. A lot of the connectors are broken. Even the headlight harness, all that stuff is gone. The secondary air pump sheared off as well, the valve. We've got a bunch of missing sensors, but the biggest thing is the oil filter housing itself. Completely cracked all the way through. All of the pulleys, all that stuff is gone. Now the biggest thing is we gotta make sure the engine itself is good because the ZHP does have a special engine, mostly just the camshafts, and then the computer itself has a different software for those better camshafts. That's why the red line is a little bit higher on the ZHPs. But in order for us to figure all this stuff out, we just gotta get to work. We're gonna start by removing all of the damaged items, take all that stuff off, make sure there's no other hidden damage. Okay, so the strut tower definitely took some impact. As you can see, this whole fender rail is all kind of crimpled up, which this part itself is not too bad. You can actually take off this whole strut tower section from right here in the back and replace that whole section. But that's gonna get expensive. We're not looking to resell this car. We're just trying to get it back on the road, make sure it's safe and sound. And, and I'll explain this a little bit more, right? So no matter what happens to this car, let's say this strut tower is not repairable, which I know it is, but if it wasn't, we're still gonna salvage the engine and transmission one way or another, swap it into something else. So let's just try to get that running first and then we'll go from there. Now, as far as all of this goes, I mean, if it was a drift car, you just chop all this off, tube it, good to go. And now the other part of the puzzle of this entire story. So we gave him a Cosmo Black E46 that's like a ZHP clone. It was a 325i. We have it on our vlog channel. We fixed it up in LA, drove it here, gifted it to him for his high school graduation. Three Februarys ago, 
he got T-boned in that one. And then he got the ZHP off of his brother, which is also pretty much looks exactly the same. It looks the same as a car that got T-boned. And then exactly a year later, he runs into someone on a blind corner. So now we gave him a year break, so we didn't fix it for a year. So now <laughs> February is coming back up. So we wanna make sure that if we're gonna make it nice, we don't wanna make it too nice, just in case the black BMW curse in February happens again. So what are your thoughts? Two years. It's been two years? You got enough of a break of wrecking BMWs to hopefully not wreck it again? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully February doesn't curse me again. We're just gonna keep you off the road in February. Sure. Well, he had a Mustang in between. Uh, what was it a SN95 Mustang? Yep. What happened to that one? <laughs> uh, I fucked up the engine. <laughs> How'd you mess up the engine? Uh, by being dumb <laughs> and not checking the oil. <laughs> and, and see, the thing is, right? He just spent so much time fixing that Mustang right before the engine went out. He did a whole clutch, upgraded clutch, and everything. And I think you know, even on this one, he had just finished doing all of the diff bushings and all, all that suspension everything yeah the coilovers all of that man all right let's keep going let's take off some of this stuff all right let's see what all is broken this is stuff that you just took out i okay. think you could pull that but then we'll cut my fingers oh. there it goes that's good enough now we can see all the wires so here's all of the headlight harness stuff this one's for the fan so actually, it's not too bad. I mean, we've got a couple of casualties here, but all this should be very easy. The problem here is all of this. So when this happened, chances are a bunch of the fuses also got blown. So we're gonna have to look into that. We've got a couple of ground issues. We've got an angel eye harness that can go. And we've got a couple other broken connectors. But for the most part, I think we're good. We should be able to salvage this harness from the other donor car. Windshield washer tank. Windshield washer pump. That goes to the AC compressor, that's still fine. Exhaust cam sensor wiring that was right here, but is no longer there. We're gonna have to replace that connector. That's fine right there, that goes to there. Oh, that's good. All right, let's get out some of this. Nice. Oh. Hornet nest, wasp nest. Okay, so this whole thing needs to go, huh? Cut it. Yeah, so this whole strut tower got pushed up and that way. So it needs to be pulled down and this way. But your windshield didn't crack, right? Nope. You ever seen an oil filter housing come off like that? So the priority in this video is going to be to get this engine to run. Now the other thing is, obviously if I was doing this on my own, I could start doing everything a lot quicker, you know, we could just pull stuff off. But the whole goal and the whole point of this entire video, or the video series I should say, is to have German learn everything. You know, whatever he can do, just let him figure it out, let him learn. Obviously I'm going to be there to guide him, but this is going to be a whole learning process for him. So now I'm trying to figure out how we're going to lift the engine up because I need to lift the car up. The transmission is not attached to anything either. We got to take the whole exhaust off. We got to take all that stuff off from underneath. In order for us to have it safe, we got to have the engine hoisted up on this somehow. Almost like you were about to do an oil pan job. I mean, I guess I can go all the way around. It's kind of sketchy, but sometimes you got to do sketchy shit. All right, let's see. We're gonna take this exhaust off, that way we can take all these covers off and look for some more damage. So 
originally we thought there was just one hole in the transmission. There's one more up in here. And then there's one more right here too that's cracked. So let's see if we can pull that bracket off. I really see the damage. that way yeah. Damn, look at all these spider eggs. I should probably vacuum all those up, huh? You heard that? Why is it getting stuck? Oh, shit, there's a chunk in there somewhere. Oh, no, it's hitting this. The little, this. Oh, okay. That's probably what we got stuck on. There's one that's cracked. At least the mounts are still good. Definitely got bit by something. Yeah. I just jammed my finger. Center support bearing. And let's see if you can see. This is bent. Yep. Look at this one right here. It's bent. You gotta get the right angle. Oh yeah, I see it. If you couldn't tell already, it's the next day. It's not raining, and we're out of the spider web infested ZHP. So we're actually having German take off a bunch of the stuff off of the donor car. Now this was a 325, and German actually removed this engine probably about a year ago out of the 325. So we're getting him to take off a bunch of these accessories, pulleys, tensioners, and even hopefully the water pump, thermostat, as much stuff as we can. That way we can use it all on the ZHP and get it running. Now the ZHP is a 330 engine, but a lot of the accessories are going to be the same between the 325 and 330. So we should be able to use a bunch of these things. We should be good. So Derma is going to be doing most of the work today because I'm going to be working on my truck. I've got a lot of stuff i got to catch up on maintenance on there. So I'm having German take off a bunch of the broken stuff still on the ZHP. The most important thing is going to be the engine mount arms. Since both of them are sheared, I'm going to have him remove both of those and then we already harnessed them from the donor engine. Get the shit out of there. Ha ha. Engine mount. I'm going to show both. That's crap. Yeah. There it is. When you're putting the engine mount arms back on, make sure you don't cross thread the bolt. And use all the 13 millimeter bolts. And don't cross thread them. Okay? If you cross thread it, it's gonna be a problem. Well, yeah, it's your car. So, I mean, I'll go over it, but just try not to cross thread them. You still have two more bolts on this that you haven't taken out. What? The 13 millimeter, the rest of the bracket. He hasn't yeah, haven't done that yet. Oh, okay. So yeah, take all of those off. And then, I mean, I'll go back and I'll torque them afterwards, but. Dun, dun, dun. So, it's only two, right? There should be four. So I'm gonna go get my hair cut, and we're gonna find out when I get back if there's any problems I'm coming back to. Well, how the fuck am I supposed to fit something all the way up here? That's a good question, you better figure it out. I don't wanna fucking strip. Before I left German unsupervised, I told him when you're putting the new engine mount arms on, just make sure you're hand tightening the bolts in, that way they don't get cross threaded or anything like that. So he did just that. But he forgot one of the most important steps, which was to check the bolts if they were damaged at all. So he put everything on hand tight, he noticed it was getting re resisting. So he took everything back off and that's when he noticed that the bolts were bent. This is where we're leaving the car off. German got a lot of work done. He got all those engine mounts replaced, even the ones with the bent bolts. We got everything tightened down, but it does need to be torqued down. We put the engine mounts back in, the rubber ones, let the engine back down, but then the passenger side engine mount is completely bent. So we're gonna put another engine mount on that one, but for the time being, we still got everything resting right here. We still have all of the jacks holding the transmission side up. That's what we're gonna figure out tomorrow is that, and then figure out some of the wiring, change some of the sensors that are broken, and then we should finally be ready to turn it on.
So a couple updates. We made this makeshift transmission cross member for the time being. That way the transmission could be held up by this while we bring the whole car down and start reassembling the engine. In the process, we were actually able to straighten out this hole and I think we just tighten it down some more and it'll straighten out the rest of the way. That only leaves us with having to fix this section right here on both sides, which I think that shouldn't be that bad because it was pretty much like a nut cert that was in there. So we just need to cut out a piece of this, weld in some flat spot right there and then nut cert again and then we should be good to go. Last night when we were putting this old engine mount in on the passenger side, the whole bottom section is fully bent. So it wasn't sitting properly. You can see right there how bent it is. Look at the stud and then look at that nub that's there. So this morning we got a new engine mount in there as well. And German did almost all of this work. I've been working on my truck, but now we're actually ready to bring the whole car down. That way we can start putting together all of this. And then we can finally turn it on and make sure the engine still runs. How you feel? We'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, so now the engine is back to where it needs to be. It's probably still tilted back a little bit because we don't have the transmission exactly where it needs to be, but we could take off all this contraption. And then oil filter housing needs to go back on, and that's pretty much it. The dipstick tube needs to be replaced because this one got bent. And we need to tie down those engine mount arms a little bit more. I don't know where German's body went, but I see his hands and his face moving. My body? Yeah. It's like John Cena, you can't see him. Oh, <laughs> Now when it comes to this whole contraption, so German already cut out all of these wires out of the parts car. So we've got all the wires right there. So this actually ties into the whole body harness. So we just cut it off from back here. And I don't like splicing stuff, but this car's not getting sold. We'll do it the right way, but we're gonna splice everything. And eventually you gotta take this whole apron and all of that. So funny thing is, this car was also hit in the front. So we actually have a vlog on repairing this whole car, and then we actually drove it from LA to Charlotte, North Carolina, to gift it to him for his graduation. It was hit in the front, and we actually repaired that whole thing, and that car was actually wrecked on the driver's side for the most part. So you can see some of the damage is still here, and that was all from that other wreck. But it was a similar wreck where that whole front was all smashed in. But then we also have this whole front clip that came off of here, because this car, is T-boned. You can see how bad it got hit. We already got all the wiring out from right here. So yeah, that front harness ties into this section right here onto this main harness. Put on the E30. And the intake manifold for the most part looks fine. So it turns out originally last year when we were gonna repair this car, in 24 hours, that was the goal. You remember what we were going to do in 24 hours? We had already bought a valve cover. We already bought an expansion tank mounting plate. Oil filter, filter housing. The biggest thing is, he had just replaced this MAF sensor before the wreck. And this MAF sensor was causing a lot of issues for like the six months prior to that. And this MAF sensor was like 300 bucks. And yeah, that's what happened. So it's fully cracked, but the actual sensor itself is fine. So we're probably gonna end up doing is see if we, I can find one of these 330 maps, just like the housing, and then we'll MacGyver it somehow to pull out the sensor and put it into the other one. Now while I'm still working on my truck, I've got German working on the valve cover. Now he's gonna be replacing this entire valve cover because the stock one is cracked. Now Selena said that this is probably the longest valve cover job she's ever seen, especially with how much access is there, you would think it would take a lot less time. but. He was taking his sweet time, making sure he's being careful, make sure no dirt or anything fell into the engine while, while he removed this dirty, grimy valve cover that's been sitting outside for so long. It is a Euro parts valve cover, which I'm not a big fan of, but it will get the job done for right now. So German got a lot of this stuff buttoned up. The valve cover's all secure. It's all new, all the gaskets, everything. We've got the oil filter housing back on, the intake boot, all that stuff is figured out for the most part. Now we're almost ready to turn the car on. 
The camshaft position sensor on the exhaust side was all busted the connector. We've got different wires for it, we've got a whole new connector. For now we just got it kind of in there. We want to see if the engine's running, that's pretty much the goal here. Even the alternator actually got cracked, so we're not going to put the alternator on either. We're just going to make sure it's not, that positive terminal is not hitting anywhere so it doesn't spark. What we do need to do is do an oil change on here. So this engine's been sitting for a year and what, 10 months now. So what we're going to do is, since we replaced the oil filter housing, we're going to take this off. We're going to go ahead and drain all the old oil out of here. We're just going to run some cheap oil in there. We're going to pour a couple quarts through the housing and then we'll fill the rest of the engine back up. And then we just got to put a battery in here and we should be good to turn it on. Oh, sit inside? Yeah. With the door closed or open? Just don't matter. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna leave it open just yeah, in case. Yeah, leave it open just in case the mice come at you. Yeah. Damn, I forgot how it feels sitting here. All right. So the airbags are blown. So the pyro charge on the battery terminal is also blown. We have one, just ha don't have it put in yet. So we're just gonna go with the jumper cables in the front and we'll put something in the back if we need to. Damn. Nope. It's gonna be super loud because there's no exhaust on here, just straight headers. All right, first time it's gonna have life in what, 16, 18 months? More than 18 months. All right, ready? Yeah, yeah. The wipers are gonna probably start going. Make sure the wipers are off. Okay, ready? It's about to get power. All right, just put the key in the ignition now and turn it. Nothing. What do you mean? No lights, come on. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> Try it again? No. Nothing? No. Okay, I might have to put another battery in the back. Oh, the light turned on in here. All right, so it's got power now, but it's, this won't let it turn on because that pyro fuse is busted. All right, but this should let it. All right, put it in accessory mode. Let's see if anything sparks. Oh, hear the beep. I'm gonna turn it. Oh, the lights come on. Okay. Oh okay. my god. The radio. Put the clutch in. All the way in? Yep. Did it go to the floor? Well, yeah. It's normal? It feels normal. Okay. All right. Keep it pushed in and try to crank it. All right. You ready? Yep. Three, two. Hold up. My phone <laughs> rang. <laughs> they ruined the suspense. All right. Y'all ready? Yeah. All right. Three. Oh. Two. One. Bruh. <laughs> Did the lights turn off? No, they're still on. Okay. Okay, it's not locked up. I added another battery. Now we got more jumper cables. Yeah, do it again. It's about to turn on. Stop. Does it have gas? Huh? Does it have gas? Oh, there's no, there's no there's gas. There's no gas? No. Like, yeah, there's like barely any gas. There's like no gas in here. Now we know what's wrong with it. And I got no gas in it. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to that. I thought all the lights were just going to come on. It's got gas. It might just not have enough gas. Bleh. There's nothing leaking onto the ground. No. She's a squirter. All right, so now we're gassed up. We've got all the batteries hooked up and we primed the fuel system multiple times now with the new gas in it. And that's lawnmower gas, but hopefully it's strong enough for it to fire off. Let's see. All right, go for it. I'm surprised how well it runs, even though it took forever to get it to turn on, which was actually kind of good because it built up that oil pressure, lubricated a lot of things. The, it's open headers, that's why it's so loud. Now on top of that, someone actually replaced the headers a while back because the cats were kind of having problems. So they replaced the headers and half the bolts are missing. <laughs> 
So we're gonna have to fix that as well. And there's a bunch of vacuum leaks everywhere. Gotta fix that. We gotta replace that battery terminal. That way that pyro charge is reset. Replace the airbags, all that stuff. Now, we got kind of to our goal, which was to see if the engine runs because of all that damage. Now we just have to get all the other stuff bundled up. And to think we were gonna do all this in 24 hours, <laughs> to about a year and a half ago, there's no way. Um, maybe if we had five or six people working on it all at once. But I really want to get the car driving next in the next video. That way we can see if that strut the strut tower is truly messed up or if it's just that fender rail and apron. So that's gonna be the goal for the next video. Get it running, get all the other mechanical stuff fixed up, and then we'll see if we need to do anything with the frame, um, the fender rail, whatever, and cosmetic stuff. How you feel? Excited. Yeah, you spent. Yeah. I mean, you you did so much stuff on here the last couple of weekends. We've only been working on weekends, and last couple of weekends you've just been wrenching on this, getting all the stuff bundled up. Can all you believe right. it turned on with all of the stuff, just all yeah. the wires just hanging around? Man. All right, well, we accomplished our goal for this video. Now, we'll see you guys in the next video. If you guys have any comments, anything that you wanna put some words of encouragement for him, go ahead and leave them down below and send him some well wishes for February. That way he doesn't wreck it again. <laughs>